So you played a couple of really great board games and you'd really like to dive further into the hobby, but the lingo's really throwing you off. You peruse your FLGS, friendly local game store, another term that reminds me of flags to this very day, and hear some people say, I only play Euro games, or others raving, Ameritrash games are way more fun! Hey there, it's the Open Geeky Gamer Guy. What makes a Euro or Ameritrash game? Well, there are many different varieties of both, but most of each type have dramatically different ways they play. Let's check out some of them now. While both incorporate luck to some degree in each type, Ameritrash revolves around it. Whether it's chunking dice to get that special number you need, or pull the perfect card to obliterate your opponents. Err. Now sometimes those results can be altered, but most of the time you're gonna go with how your opponents or the game is going and react to it. In Euro games, it's much more about maximizing your own turn. Which brings me to another keystone of Ameritrash games, randomness. From the setup to how other players are playing, you never really know what someone else, or the game for that matter, will do on their turn. While Euro games also incorporate some randomness into the mix, it is in much fewer and predetermined ways. The setup may vary, but there are only a handful of ways the game starts. Theme can really pull you in and transport you. Be that's epic space battles or horrific zombie slaying. These are almost always Ameritrash games, where the feeling and the components are dripping with the theme of the game. Usually, but not always, the games have very stylized components to add to the drama. Each player usually starts the game with some advantage over the others, allowing them to do something that nobody else can do. In Euro games, theme is usually not the focus and can sometimes feel a little bit tacked on or any theme under the sun. The components are usually simplified, opting for the comfortable yet familiar meeple and wooden cubes to boot. While both types rely on strategy to win, Euro games, with their less luck and randomness, are much more centered around strategy. Many people believe that Euro games are multiplayer solitaire, where you hardly affect other players' turns, but really worry about maximizing your own turn. Unlike in Ameritrash games, usually people start at the exact same level with the exact same actions to take. Now there will always be some player interaction in each type of game. Ameritrash games is usually in a much more direct way whether it's attacking other opponents or eliminating someone to further you to victory. In Euro games, player interaction is in a much more indirect way, usually taking a spot on the board that another player is looking to go to, or selecting an action that only one player can take advantage of per round. Now what Euro games lack in theme, they almost always make up for with tight and balanced mechanics. These mechanics are usually easy to learn, but hard to master. They rely on building an engine to help you get more and more resources as play goes along. Ameritrash games have awesome mechanics too, but they are more affected by the randomness and luck during the game. Now that I've told you some of the characteristics, here's a few games of each type for you to check out. And that's it! This was just a small overview of what most, but certainly not all, Euro and Ameritrash games there are out there. As of now, a lot of games have begun to mix both types into an almost hybrid that takes some of the best qualities of each and delivers something remarkable. What's your favorite Euro or Ameritrash game? Let me know in the comments! If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you would subscribe. Until next time, stay geeky, keep gaming!